Hey, thanks for coming by this presentation. My name is Brady DeCuto, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Utah, working with the Cognitive Motor Neuroscience Research Team. And I have the pleasure today of presenting findings from a project that we've been collaborating with US Ski and Snowboard and Austrian researchers on that looks at athlete development and adolescent ski racers. So without further ado, we will get started. So to provide some background, uh, culture and geographical location can affect athlete development, but few studies have directly compared two countries in this topic that are closely competitive on the world stage. And the United States and Austria actually provide a good template for this kind of investigation, given they both produce internationally elite level alpine ski racers, yet also possess very distinct national models for sport participation. So for example, in Austria, alpine skiing is a national sport, while the U.S. has a lot of other sports at its forefront. Uh, so this means that alpine skiing receives less media attention. And funding sources for sport participation also differ, as Austrians benefit from considerable government provision for organized sport clubs, while funding in the U.S. stems primarily from private sponsors, franchises, and educational institutions. Uh, so this means that adolescent skiers in the U.S. must often pay considerable sums to attend prestigious ski academies for skill development, while Austrian ski academies are primarily restricted to the most physically dominant athletes. So in light of all of this, the purpose of the study was to examine differences in developmental factors between U.S. and Austrian adolescent ski racers. In our methods, we collaborated with U.S. ski and snowboard and researchers from Austria to collect participation in psychological data from adolescent skiers attending these boarding schools. So first, we administered a practice history questionnaire, which measures sport-specific milestones, practice hours over a career, and participation in other sports. And we also gave questionnaires assessing burnout, mental toughness, and perfectionism on multidimensional scales. And we collected performance data using an online database that shows international performance ranking. And then for the analyses, we used MANOVAs to investigate differences in milestones and dispositions and mixed regressions to analyze practice and performance trends over time. So onto the results, uh, we found that Austrians first engaged in competition and non-ski training earlier than American skiers and U.S. skiers participated in a greater amount of other sports from childhood through adolescence. So these results indicate that Austrians um, specialize in their sport younger, while U.S. skiers likely experience more sport diversification throughout their development. And in our psychological analyses, we found that Austrians showed greater mental toughness on the constancy and control subscales and decreased burnout on the reduced sense of accomplishment and exhaustion subscales. Uh, the U.S. women also self-reported greater perfectionistic tendencies, which were shown on perceived parental pressure and organization subscales. Um, and taking all of the psychological findings together, uh, it reflects a more adaptive psychological profile for Austrian skiers in greater mental toughness, less burnout, and less perfectionistic concerns. Uh, for the practice analyses, the mixed regression showed that U.S. ski racers accumulated more practice hours over their career than Austrian skiers, as you can see in that figure. And Austrians also outperformed U.S. skiers. So given these two findings, uh, reduced practice for Austrians might imply higher quality or greater efficiency of training. And the elevated hours in U.S. ski racers might be due to reduced opportunities for competitive sport beyond high school, which means they must maximize their practice time prior to reaching adulthood if they want to continue to competitively ski. Um, we also found a gender interaction showing that U.S. women practice the most in their country and Austrian men practice the most in their country. So these effects may be reflective of gender stigmas for sport participation in Austria, since it's been shown that adolescent women might be more motivated by health than participation in aesthetic sports like figure skating or ballet. While in the U.S., women may have more sport opportunities um, due to policies such as Title IX, yet still face gender stigmas for sport participation. So taking everything together, Austria's more adaptive psychological profile and early specialization trends suggest that they may have a more supporting environment for sport participation, especially given their national recognition for alpine skiing. And additionally, Austria's strict talent filtration system may actually contribute to their elevated mental toughness, since our population consisted of Austrian skiers who outcompeted their peers for entrance into these ski academies. So this process may inherently develop mental resiliency. And given the practice results, the U.S. skiers' increased practice time may be an indirect result of decreased opportunities for sport beyond adolescence, since those who want to ski in the future must possess enough skill to compete for limited positions in professional racing. Finally, the increased burnout and perceived pressure in U.S. skiers, for the women in particular, highlights a concerning trend potentially caused by sport opportunities and sociological factors, such as gender stigmas in sport. But the findings might also reflect that ski racing for women has risen to an increased popularity on the back of popular skiers such as Lindsey Vaughn and Michaela Schifrin.
So thanks for listening to this presentation. I'd like to acknowledge the colleagues uh, that you see listed here. And I encourage you to check out some of the other presentations related to this theme. So thanks for coming by and enjoy your NASPA experience.